Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. Happy Wednesday, my little pod besties. Happy <laughs> Wednesday. As you, well, if you people are listening, they can't see us, but we're in a little different of a space. We're in Deep T's apartment right now. But don't get used to it because... We're just trying some new things out. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see where we end up. <laughs> yeah. We're like, you know what? Let's uh, mix it up. Let's have a party at Deep D's place. <laughs> exactly. Speaking about parties, Deep D and I. <laughs> did you like that transition? Yeah, I did. I was like, wow, are we getting better transitions? Wow. Or what? Look at me. Um, Deep D and I went to a mutual friend's birthday party. Yes. And tell them, tell them <laughs> your attitude, Natalie. <laughs> and I was thinking in my head, what a great duo we make. We're like Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> who's Batman and who's Robin? We switch. Okay. <laughs> we switch. In this case, you were definitely Batman and I was Robin. So Let we were at bow. this party. It was a dinner. And um, we didn't know the other people at this dinner. And, <laughs> you know, one thing about me is I'm very introverted and I get very overwhelmed when there's a lot of people talking. I have to make small talk with people I don't know. And it's like super loud. Yeah, like, it was, was a like, super loud restaurant. There's like a random DJ at this restaurant. I'm like, <laughs> are we having dinner or are we at a club? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I just churn off like a fucking robot. I'm like, mm. you guys, literally, I was chatting it up with the two people next to me. I look over at Nat and she's just Miz, like so miserable. My, they're like, yeah, literally, I have <laughs> no emotion on my face. I'm not talking to anyone. And Deep D looks at me and she goes, You're miserable, aren't you? And I literally I was like, like, Are you okay? Yeah, she's like, <laughs> Are you fine? She goes, I haven't heard you say a peep all night. And I was like, no, I'm good. But Deep D, on the other hand, was like talking it up. She has the gift of gab. But she was like, oh, gift really? Of gab. She goes, what do you do for work? Oh, how many kids do you have? Oh, who's your partner? Like just literally getting to know everyone at this party. Dude, I'm a social butterfly. You really are. And that is why I did not feel the need to get to know anyone because I was all like, you and I are a duo. <laughs> Deep D and Natalie is our name. And so, so I was truly. like, as long as one of us is friendly, yeah, like people are going to go away th having a really good first impression of me because you made up for it. And honestly, it's the same for reverse roles because sometimes, like sometimes when we go to like certain influencer <laughs> events, this bitch is just running around crazy. Who, me? Yes. And I'm like, I just can't. I did not today. No, I'm like, I'm literally staring her down like, when can we leave? Yeah, I know. Because we live in the same building. I'm not going to leave without you. She's always like, so want to leave in five? And I was like, mm -hmm, give me like 10 more minutes. Let me just finish up this conversation. Dude, are we codependent? <laughs> Is this codependency? No, I really think we're codependent. That's, no, really, we are. We are one person. No, we really are. And our names are Deep D and Natalie. That is our <laughs> one name. Whatever you do reflects on me, and whatever I do reflects on you. And like, I, I just depend on you. Like, if you are being so friendly, I'm like, this is my time to not talk to anyone. And yeah, someone might think I'm a bitch, but when they go home to talk to their friends about the people they met at this party, when They're they like, say. Oh. They were fun. And Deep D and Natalie, so fun and friendly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why I have to look at you and be like, dude, you need to cheer up and make conversation because you're making us look bad. <laughs> no. You better get your shit together because we cannot have and, a negative name. <laughs> and you can you can read me so well. Oh. Like when Deep D knows I'm in a bad mood, she she knows it the moment. You guys, we we are somewhere. Like, I know every single emotion Natalie feels, and it's really <laughs> bad because I'll have a smile on my face, and Deep D's like, "You're miserable right now." <laughs> even when you, even when you lie to other people, I'm like, that bitch just "When, when I'm I telling a lie, much. like especially if I don't want to go somewhere and I'm lying to someone, why I'm we like, can't go?" Deep D is such a good friend that she will go along with the lie. Oh, like she will just to. jump in. Absolutely. Like I don't even need to give you a heads up the type of lie I'm about to tell. Mm -hmm. She will jump in as if and she will go like beyond. Like she will add details that make sense a lot. <laughs> no, wait. We know that you can't do that when you lie. You got to be very, very high level. You know what I'm saying? Like no, I yes. know. I know if I like, let's say I make up a lie like, oh, Deep D and I can't come because we're recording our podcast. If that person <laughs> confirms with Deep D, I don't even need to give Deep D a heads up oh, no. that I told that lie. She will cover her ass for me. She'll uh, be like, 100%. yeah, you know what? Like. It's just going to be a really long night. Um, so yeah, Natalie definitely can't go to the party because we will be recording Dude, for 10 hours. The amount of times we used the podcast as an excuse to get out of shit is insane. Yeah. They're probably like, wow, this podcast has taken over their lives, which it has. But like the amount of times we've used it. 
people are probably like, I'm so fucking sick of you and your podcast. Like, they're always like, how many episodes do you come out every week? And I was like, at the, the amount we've used this podcast as an excuse, 10. We have 10 episodes like, that come how, out every week. How long are your episodes? Uh, only an hour. <laughs> I know. They're like, what? And I was like, oh, we record 10 hours worth, but only cut it down to one hour. <laughs> That is a problematic. I feel like good thing none of our friends really listen to this. I feel like pod besties, you're listening and being like, this is toxicity. No, it is toxicity. And the fact that we feed each other the toxicity is even worse. The fact that we tell each other, hey, like, this is okay. That's why I'm concerned for us. I'm concerned that we're too validating to each other. No, I I really do have that concern sometimes, but it's okay. You know what? I feel like we're not hurting anyone. Like, obviously, we go to places that we are required (laughs) to go or where we have to be somewhere for our family and friends. But if it's like, let's say, ooh, is this going to get us in trouble? But let's say it's like, I don't know. It depends. It's like an influencer dinner. Oh, yeah. Where it's like, we don't really need to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, it's good to network, but at the same time, I'm like social battery zero. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's who cares? Yeah. Will I say no? No, I'm going to say no. We can't come because of the podcast. It's like, you need a reason. Yeah. (laughs) It's like 9.30 p.m. on a Saturday night. And we're like, I'm so sorry. We have to go do the podcast. Um, oh, we're crazy. But, yeah. Uh, okay. Also, in the news, did you see that the Golden Bachelor and his wifey got are getting a divorce? Yes. They announced it today on Good Morning America. And I did hear about this. Honestly, I'm surprised they lasted three whole months because truly – I've had uh, my friends watch it. I didn't watch the Golden Bachelor. Did you watch? I Golden didn't Bachelor? watch it, but I followed along through social media. Yes, and okay, a lot of my friends who watched it were not fans of Gary whatsoever, and they were like shocked by who he picked. But this news is not surprising, and they're like, it's not surprising to me at all. Because what what were like the allegations about him? Like, I think he had like kind of a weird dating history, and I don't know some other things. There was like a lot of negative things that came out. I'm not going to lie, I could not tell you <laughs> any of that. No, I know. That's that's the thing about social media and reality oh. TV. Like when things come out on the news, you're yeah. like, I know something negative yeah, came something out, but I can't happened. tell you what. Exactly. Um, But I thought Gary was so handsome when he was chosen as the Golden Bachelor. And I thought the show was so cool. So if you guys oh. aren't familiar with the Golden Bachelor, it's a spinoff of The Bachelor, Bachelorette shows Mm -hmm. um but the contestants are age 65 and up yeah Mm -hmm. so it's which is so dope yeah yeah it was so popular here in the u.s a lot of people were talking about the show because it's so unique yes um and then obviously the the golden bachelor gary got married to Teresa in this like huge televised wedding um she got everything paid for even the I think the show was going to pay for their um, honeymoon to Italy. And yeah. she would talk about it on her Instagram. Like she had a whole mood board, all this stuff. And Damn, all you got sudden, some details, girl. I know. <laughs> well, when, when they announced their divorce today, yeah. I was like, I, I need to know more. Like, oh, you went people, into FBI mode? People, I was like, did people see this coming? And I think people didn't really see it coming because mm-hmm. Gary and Teresa really – like hit it on social media yeah. and they were on family feud last week with oh. their respective children and grandchildren so people are like what the hell like, like what? What, what took a turn additionally the bachelor official instagram page was posting photos of them recently too just being really happy yeah and so this is just like i think all around shocking but it kind of shows you how social media it's, can be deceiving oh yeah 100 percent. i think the version of yourself that lives on social media is so different than reality i truly think that this is what is so sad about social media is like you cannot base your life or compare yourself to people on social media because behind the scenes it's a completely different story so again i don't know the man so i'm not gonna like <laughs> yeah speculate about his character however I think that what's really interesting about when these couples come out of dating shows, like meet on dating shows and Mm -hmm. get married from dating shows like The Bachelor franchise, but also Love is Blind is people look at people's like social media to make judgments on how a couple is doing like or 
you know, really like criticize couples too based on their like social media activity. And I think these examples show like social media is not real life. You cannot say a couple is happy or they're doing well based on their social media posts. Yeah. And, and nor all, their interviews. I agree. And also the the couples who post the most, I always say this is hilarious when you know the couples that are going through it, if they post like pictures together all the time and they're the longer the caption, the worse <laughs> their relationship is. And I love that because it's so true. It's so true. Well, Ayana has said this publicly. Ayana from our season, mm-hmm. who is also our best friend, um, when she divorced Jarrett, yeah, um, she like openly talked about just like how it was really hard to even file for divorce because of the pressures from the public. Mm-hmm. She felt like filing for divorce meant like failure, you know, in the eyes of people who watch Love is Blind and watched our season. Yeah. Because I think that in this space, when you get married on a reality TV show, mm-hmm. like divorce is seen as failure versus yeah. choosing yourself or choosing, you know, the the best route. Yeah. That's exactly how it was with Kyle and I too. There was so much public pressure to not just be together, but stay together because there's so many people rooting for you. And I was rooting for us too, but it was really difficult to be like, hey, like we're no longer together because not only was I disappointed the relationship didn't work out, but I knew like these thousands and thousands of people who put in so much time and we're rooting us. for you guys. Yeah. And it, it's like disappointing them is like a tough thing, you know? And you know it's what's hard. really sucked is like when you guys announced um your separation or your breakup, mm-hmm. I remember people being like, I told you, like exactly. they were faking it. I was like, you guys, see, that's the thing. It's like people just based on social media activity, they think that they know. And it's like, no, you guys don't know. Like I lived yes. it with Deep D. Like mm-hmm. I saw their relationship. She was not faking it. You know how I feel about Kyle. <laughs> but, but like they, it wasn't yeah. a fake relationship. Well, that's exactly how the I'm sure the Bachelor people or even Love is Blind couples, that's exactly how they feel. It's like when you announce it, it opens up the like it opens it up to the public to have these crazy opinions like, oh, I knew they just like yeah. didn't get along. I knew their marriage was whack like this about this person and that like all these like random assumptions come up and it sucks to be in the position where you have to like see all of it. You yeah, know? But- we're seeing that with Gary and Teresa right now. Oh, if you look sure. at social media, people are like, we knew they weren't going to make it like they weren't really in love. Like I didn't you know, even watch it and I knew. Yeah. They were- gonna make it. <laughs> but you know like we you know we no, think it's that true. about that too but it's so crazy if they didn't announce this mm-hmm. we'd probably look at their social media and be like yeah. oh i was wrong wow they really are happy like exactly. i was totally wrong and i think you see that with other love is blind couples too mm-hmm. of like people make those judgments they're like cool. oh my god they're actually so happy or alternatively they'll say like oh they haven't posted in so long like they must not be happy yeah. and it's like i think these are the examples when you have to realize like you know this divorce announcement is Nobody knows anything yeah. and you can't make assumptions through social media. But the annoying part is there it's always going to be there. When you're in the public eye, it's all you're always subject to having other people's perspectives and their assumptions thrown on you. That is just comes with the territory. And in fact, it even is the same way for like even before having a public whatever. I remember just like within my friends and like high school people and college people, I would do the same thing. I'd be like, ooh, they are not together. Let me just go oh. dig deep. So it's like, if yes. you do that with your own like college acquaintances and things, imagine the public eye. That's true. It is officially spring, which means taking morning walks to get coffee, going to workout classes, and spending time outside on patios with friends. Whatever spring brings to you, you can use your everyday purchases to build your financial goals, like those morning coffee purchases and those workout classes. When you use the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can build your credit scores with on-time payments for everyday purchases. If there was an overachieving credit card that helps you build credit, this would be it. Exactly. And there's no annual fee, interest, or credit check to get started. You can use it everywhere. Visa credit cards are accepted. By the way, you get a Chime checking account too, which has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. With Chime Secure Credit Card, you can start improving your credit scores right away. Get started today at Chime.com slash out of the pods. That's Chime.com slash out of the pods. Chime feels like progress. 
The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawals and OTC advance fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Chime.com slash disclosures for details. Do you ever creep on people from like your past that you're not as close with anymore? So like, for example, this recently happened, but... (laughs) This girl that I knew um, from college, and we don't really keep in touch anymore. She all yeah. of a sudden archived all the photos with her husband. Yeah, and randomly, I was like, "What? What happened? Like, <laughs> do, are, okay, where did he go? Exactly." And then you're like, "You're like doing some digging. You're asking around and be like, did they divorce? Yes. Like, what's going on? Or and- they're posting like wholesome quotes about like letting go or losing <laughs> yes. love. I'm like, oh yeah, something definitely happened. Let me just dig deep. You know what's crazy? It's I don't even do it with my acquaintances. This one time I went to my acquaintance's mother because that's how <laughs> I used to creep to get content. And I was like, ooh, what happened with your mom? Like she's getting a divorce. I even oh. creep on my ex's exes yes. and keep up with their lives. Yes. And I was like, Oh my gosh, did she break up with her new boyfriend? <laughs> like, the ultimate team. That is our and I'm reality. Like, why? Team. <laughs> why am I so into this person's business? So I totally get why people make judgments on, you know, like obviously like us and other people they see on yeah. reality TV. Um, going back to Jerry and Teresa, though, I wonder if they got married because of the pressure of the show. Obviously, like look at our life and reality TV. It's like when you're going through the motions of it, obviously you want to like keep moving forward. You want to like hope that there's love. But when those cameras go away, reality hits and life is like, oh, I have to live with this decision. Just kidding. I'm I'm good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just. I feel like there's like a high yeah. point, like yeah. when you are on a reality TV show, you get married on a reality TV show and then people are like, oh my gosh, we're so happy. And you feel like so good about mm-hmm. it right like you are this like golden couple all these the endorphins show. yeah are running through you dopamine yeah all this attention and yes. then you're right it kind of goes away and you're like uh Dude. is this marriage strong enough or do i actually want to be in this marriage did you feel like that when after or after we finished filming i felt like it was like so much energy so much going on in our life so many cameras crew everything and then all of a sudden it was like nothing and I felt so low and like just sad you know yeah I think people call it like the post-show blues like people who've been on reality tv Mm -hmm. I've seen some like previous reality tv show contestants talk about this where you're on a high with you know all the cameras around you and all the lights and even getting mic'd up like just feeling so important and there's like this adrenaline rush being like this feels so unique and special right and then one day it just goes away just goes away the literally the day after filming ends is like the weirdest feeling it's so weird i mean i've talked about it where you know my wedding was on a sunday and monday i was straight at work at 8 a.m i know it was so hard to concentrate like doing stand-ups and stuff and i was like what my boss like asked me that i'm like this is irrelevant to my like i'm like yeah. i have no purpose but you feel weird <laughs> you're just like oh my gosh i just went through this like crazy thing and it was such like a crazy environment and then mm-hmm. now just back to real life speaking about social media have you seen the backlash that jojo c was getting all over tiktok dude i it's literally all over my fyb <laughs> i can't escape it yeah it, i feel really really but bad but i can't look away either it's Ah, she's doing a good job, though. I think this is exactly good job of what I think this is exactly what she wanted. Truly, she Um, wanted people backlash. She wanted people talking about her. I actually don't believe in that. Like when people say like all publicity is good publicity, like, no, it's not. Like, I don't think people want bad publicity. I think they mm, I don't know, because based on what she's been saying in in the media and on podcasts, she's like, I want to be like Miley Cyrus bangers era. Which means she wants people talking about her. She wants to make a splash. And I feel like she doesn't care really that much that it's somewhat negative. I think that it probably hurts her that it's negative. I'm sure. Just because like, so just to set the context for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, Jojo Siwa is the social media personality. She was previously known for like her really cute girly persona. Like she wore big bows, Giant colorful bows. outfits. Mm-hmm. And then she rebranded recently where she's wearing kind of like these very dark outfits. Her new song talks about how she's a bad girl. I'm a bad girl. <laughs> 
uh, and I, I do like bad, bad things. Is that the next lyric? Because commas a bitch. <laughs> yeah, she's like. Should have known better. And she's like openly talking about it being like, this is my rebrand. Did you watch the um, music video? No, but oh people are my. coming for it. So anyways, that's where the backlash is coming for. People are like, what rebrand is this? And <laughs> kind of making fun of her yeah. for trying so hard to like become this like darker, like bad girl type of persona. Yeah. Like also people need to chill the F out because imagine being a child star. Yeah. And she started on Dance Moms. And like at the age of what? Like I don't even know, like seven, eight. Yeah, she like, was like she's super so young. young on that so show. So her entire life has been in the public eye and all of a sudden people are just like coming for like I think it's just kind of rude. Like let her do what she wants to do. I don't know. I think it's just like I don't know. It's tough when somebody has grown up in front of us and she's trying to make it, you know, she's trying to create a life that's unique to her instead of like associating herself with these big bows and dance moms and all these things. You know, it's like, let her do her. Like, why are people so offended? Okay, like 80 (laughs) percent. Okay, because everyone comes for me for saying 100 percent, but I agree with you 80 percent. Only 80? Okay, because can I tell you, it's. It's the path she chose to, like, continue staying in the public eye. Mm -hmm. I mean, something about, you know, people who have been in the public eye since they were young, I don't think it's, like, entirely their fault. Obviously, like, her parents take some responsibility, but, like, and it's probably the only, like, life she's known, like, the only career path she feels like she can take. Obviously, like, it's kind of a bubble. We've kind of felt it a little bit through Love is Blind. However, um... I, like, agree with you in that I think people are being, like, super harsh for, what is she, like, 22? She's 22, yep. And she's not going to make the perfect decisions, and it sucks when you're getting judged for that. But I'm not going to lie. This whole, like, rebrand, obviously, like, I'm, not, I'm like, following along, but not really following along. Yeah. But everything that I've seen about her rebranding is kind of, like, cringy. No, I know. And especially because, um, well, she recently also came out as gay, mm. right? So I feel like there's a lot of changes happening in her life. And it's just hard for people to wrap their heads around this new version of JoJo. Here's the thing about, again, that saying of, like, all publicity is good publicity. I don't believe that. I don't think she wants negative publicity. I think she thought that the public was going to really embrace this rebrand and she thought she really had something. Because if she's trying to mirror Miley Cyrus, if you look back on Miley Cyrus's career, I think that even though Miley Cyrus had moments that were like really controversial to the public in terms of like the persona she put out there, Ultimately, like where she is now, looking back, people are more like sympathetic to her. Yeah, but I think it takes time. I really do think JoJo is smart. Like she is doing the right type of marketing to get herself out there and seen as someone different. I think I really think like, yeah, she might be a little offended because people are coming for her. But at the same time, I'm look at us. We're talking about it. There's so many major podcasts talking about it. She's all over TikTok. JoJo's fucking song is engraved into my soul like i'm laying Deet down is in bed. a bad girl <laughs> she likes doing bad things and karma is like thing. using this podcast <laughs> as an excuse not to go out exactly <laughs> see that I is really the bad <laughs> thing i've done so far <laughs> wow if that's the worst thing you've done good god <laughs> do you remember our first dates in the pods like that first day where we talked to all of the 15 men yes, for like 10 to 15 minutes that was the most exhausting day of my life and i was like i have to be on for 15 times like i have to make a good impression 15 times yeah and that's tough imagine no i because oh, i yeah, w- you were there <laughs> yes i oh yeah literally i was like, I was like imagine like, imagine i was like i was right next to you bitch <laughs> I love how you're like, yeah, let me imagine. That's a tough thing. Yeah, like, hmm. I was like, I've never experienced such a thing before. Um, that was good. That was no, good. it was it was so tiring. I think yeah. about that day often and I went back to my journal to like <laughs> remind myself what a shitty day that was. But it's it's so tough because the pressure's on. It's not just like 15 first dates. It's like 15 first dates where you better make a really good fucking impression <laughs> and be the funniest person you could ever be. And then also really great conversationalist because the love of your life <laughs> might be there and you only have 15 minutes to like convince someone like you could be little their wife little did we know that there was not any of our loves of our lives on the other side and we worked so hard there's actually always one 
that is kind of like my white rhino, like the one that got away. Mm -hmm. Wow, a rhino reference after we had Blake on the podcast? Is it changing you? Ooh. Ooh. She's um, brushing up for when they get married at, uh, yeah. is it 37? <laughs> no, I feel like it's 45 now. He's like, let me push He's it like, way boop, back. Boop, boop. <laughs> Wait, by the okay. way. Yes. People took that way too seriously. My no, marriage pact. You guys literally, Natalie, made that up right on the spot at no, the podcast studio. <laughs> no, Blake and I have talked about it before, know, but it's kidding. always as like a joke. It kind of is that joke where it's like, you know, we're so close. If we want to grow old together, we could. But like no one ever, it's not a real thing. No, yeah. And people were like, this is so, this is so dis disrespectful to the sanctity of marriage. And I was oh like, Oh my huh? God, please <laughs> calm down. I have a I have a marriage pact with my gay best friend. So Yeah, it's like one of those things of like, you know, if we, you know, end up single and you know we are done trying to date or whatever like i'd love to just like own a house with you yeah it's, but it's nothing or... serious you're not like oh i'm 40 hey hello <laughs> are we getting married or not <laughs> we're praying that that doesn't happen it's uh no but i um the first pod dates were really super fun actually but they were so tiring i remember towards the very end of them i was like oh i'm fucking done everything is so boring like i hate you <laughs> Truly, that's how my mindset towards the end of it. <laughs> You're right. Like the first date of the 15 we had to go on on the first day in the pods, I remember being like the best. Like you are refreshed, so yes. excited. And then by the 13th, 14th, and 15th date, you're just like, you are drained. Mm -hmm. And I think also our standards went up at like the the latter dates because like you have to be something special to make you yeah, stand Yeah, you're out. like, okay. Because mm -hmm. like we rank like yeah. the men that we want to see the next day mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And you're like, okay, now I have to ask like tougher questions and start filtering men because I can only choose eight out of the 15. Yeah, I think rank. it was eight. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Six that's or eight. crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting off oh, like shit. half the group or more than half the group. Um, Do you remember who your first date was? I don't. I think it was Rocky. Mine was Rocky, so it couldn't have been. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rocky was your second or third. Yeah, he was definitely like... He was my... I remember him being my number one, being like, oh, he set the bar so high. How do you come back? How do I like go on dates after this? Yeah. And then my last was like a corporate vote. It was so boring. I, was like, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking you about. You know who I'm talking about. I won't call him out, but I was like, and he was And he was in like my top four like throughout That's because he was in your filming. beginning half of your dates. Yeah, I mean, he was, I don't want to say boring, but it was a very, like, you know, we, there's nothing fun in that conversation. There was no, like, flirtation. We didn't go particularly deep in our conversation either. Yeah. But I liked that he felt so safe. Yeah. Like, he didn't have, like, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, like, I could see myself talking to you for the rest of my life and there's no drama, you know, like, you're just kind of, you're a solid, <laughs> solid choice. You know what's crazy? The fact that um, we had similar interests, I will say, without naming any names, proves that we were supposed to be friends. You mean we had like similar interests in men, too? Like we looked for similar characteristics in men. I mean, we're not going off of appearances. We're just going off of personality. <laughs> and that means that like that's why we're so close. Didn't we only have like one in common? Two? Two. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Because I feel like the one. Why are that you we, doing? I this feel to like the one. On the that, I feel like the one that we did like showed that we were like a little bit toxic. <laughs> we're both crazy, and we needed some healing to do. <laughs> do you remember the guy who told the same joke to all the women? <laughs> Which the, one? What the OnlyFans oh, feet um, jokes. Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, guys! So there was a oh. there was a man, and I we won't say who. Man, I'm just kidding. A man. A man. <laughs> um, <laughs> There was a man the first day in the pods who, you know, made a joke that he his primary job was selling feet pics on OnlyFans <laughs> and like no judgment. So clever. Yeah. We were like, haha, weird joke. But he literally told every single woman this joke. And here's the thing. Why men are so dumb. 
<laughs> like, did he not think that we were all going to, like, talk about it when we went back into the women's lounge? Probably not, considering he was a wasted half the time he was there. Yeah, he was also very drunk. He was wasted out of his goddamn mind. But here's the thing about women, is we are FBI agents when we are trying to know men we are dating. Yes, absolutely. So obviously, after our 15 dates, we're all going to go back and be like, hey. Who'd you like? Who'd Tell you me. like? Oh, you liked him? Tell me more about him. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to gather, like, more information that we we're able to get in the 15 minutes we had in each date. Because, like, duh, that's that's womanhood. And, and <laughs> every girl is going to get a different piece of information out of these men. So, yeah. obviously, we're going to compare notes. And we're going to give each other, like, warnings and head heads ups about men that we were like, huh, about. Mm, absolutely. So, when I went back into the lounge, I remember being like, hey, did so-and-so say this OnlyFans feet pics joke to you guys? Everyone was like, yes. <laughs> Raise Every your hand. single woman was like, <laughs> yes, he did. And they were like, did he say it like this? Like, did he deliver the joke like this? And everyone was like, <laughs> yes. And that is exactly why he was cut day three. <laughs> yeah, that was sadly like it wasn't the worst date. But when everyone no, is putting their best foot forward, it was it was the it worst. Was one of I was the like, worst. when can the when can I get out of this? Like, I need out immediately. <laughs> it yeah, was so bad. We've talked about this before, how hair thinning happens in approximately one in two women. We have gotten messages from you all who have experienced this. I know we don't openly talk about it enough and going through it can feel lonely and frustrating. I've experienced this and that's why I take Nutrafol. I've used it for two years now and it has helped make my hair thicker with less shedding. And their supplements support healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning, including stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeking thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Your hair is never just about your hair and Nutrafol knows that. That's why Nutrafol takes a whole body approach to hair health, addressing the problems inside to help hair grow on the outside, supporting your lifestyle, not just your hairstyle. So take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code out of the pods. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code out of the pods. That's Nutrafol.com promo code out of the pods. One thing that is very interesting about the pods, though, is how much voice matters on day one because you have nothing else to judge someone on. I know we talk about that all the time. Mm -hmm. But if someone has a voice that is not – it's – oh, my gosh, it's so hard to even judge voices. But, like, is a voice that I don't like, I cut them off my list. Yeah. Which is so crazy because it's just a voice. And if I met someone – like, you never judge people off their voices when you meet them, do no, you? No, not never. really. Not but in really. the pods, it's hard not to. I think it's not only voice, but if you're able to speak exactly. clearly and concisely. That's like, you are a good communicator. You are going to thrive. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think, like, voice is one thing for sure. It, like, initially brings you in, similar to how, like, your physicality brings you in in real life. But then you have to be able to, like, continuously hold your own and, like, be thoughtful in what you say and like, you know, obviously have the personality along with the voice to carry yeah. you through. Because otherwise there has been there's been some men, I think, in the pods that were like had great voices, but like they're just kind of duds. Alternatively, there were men who had not as attractive voices, which is so weird to say, because I don't know what really constitutes an attractive voice. Mm hmm. And they turned out to be like the best of the bunch, yeah. in my in my opinion. And it really sucks because they weren't chosen yeah. because of their voice. Yeah. I'm laughing because I'm like, best of the bunch was still low par. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's just so many variables to it, but voice does matter. Yeah. Voice definitely matters. I remember I regretted cutting one of the men off my list after the first day in the pod. So after like that speed dating day with all 15 men, because... The conversation was lackluster and it sucks that we only had that first date of just 15 minutes to make our decisions. Mm -hmm. And I regret that, like cutting that person because I'm like, it could have gone somewhere, I think. I don't think that anymore. Like, again, I don't think we would have worked out. But at the time, I remember being like, oh, like what a bummer. 
Yeah. Like I kind of wish that he made a better first impression. But for him, I think he was so nervous that he wasn't asking me any questions about myself. Yeah. And so I just assumed like I just had to make the quick assumption like, oh, gosh, like this guy doesn't care about getting to know me or <laughs> like, ego he's, you know, going. like, he, yeah. But I thought he must be so egotistic that he hasn't asked me a single question about myself. But again, I think it was just nerves because knowing mm-hmm. him now, he's very not egotistic wants to get to know everyone. And that's what really sucks about the pods. Yeah. Like really is the downfall. No, I agree. I think um, first, like in reality though, like, I don't know, like you've been dating mm-hmm. recently. How's that been going for you? Like compared to the pods? Yeah, like compared to the pods, like first dates obviously are way more like you have to put effort into them in the real world versus when we were in the pods, it was like all set up for us. And it was so easy to kind of just go with the process of it and trust that there's some quality men on the other side and that you're going to find somebody that you really like. Right. How has been dating and first dates been different for you in real life? Mm, I mean, a lot different because obviously I get to see what they physically look like and see their mannerisms, mannerisms which is huge. Honestly, of between meeting people organically or on dating apps versus being in the pods, I will always choose dating apps and organically. Like, I just don't trust the pods after going through that process. I think it was really fun. But I do agree with what Blake said in our previous episode where he was all like, I couldn't be in the pods because, like, I go off people's, like, energy and Mm -hmm. um, their mannerisms. Yeah. And spot on. Same for me. I feel like mannerisms and, you know, facial expressions, everything, like, tells you a lot about someone than going off of someone's voice. Because, like, really, we just said it, but, like, it's hard not to judge someone just off their voice and how they talk. No, I agree. I think uh, that's... When you're in the pods. I totally agree. And that's why I appreciated the pods because there's always a stage two, which is introducing the physicality of it. And I think that's the whole part of the experiment. But never during the process of Love is Blind was it like, oh, like, physicality and your mannerisms and how you, like, carry yourself as a person all of these things come into play it's just when you build that emotional connection is it strong enough to surpass the physical stuff and i think the answer is no i think the experiment has proven that it's not which is why even dating apps are really hard for me like you know this like i haven't been on a dating app since love is blind and I don't think I think I'll... you would be really successful on a dating app. Though. I know I am because I've done it. One in thing the past. about DT is this woman gets hit on all the time. Like <laughs> it is wild. I don't know how. And I'm like, you who? Hello. No. Well, you get hit on too. Shut no, up. I, no, I literally don't. Again, you know why? Why? Because you're prettier than me. No, it's because of my energy. It's my energy. I think I give off like a good. Like really fine. I don't. No, I'm not saying you don't. Well, I go, sometimes I, I look go. at you and you're like. <laughs> I come into a bar and it's like blackness around no, she's, me. No, she's usually. <laughs> okay, you guys, the reason why she's saying that is because I asked Natalie to lift up her hand so I can see her aura. <laughs> and she's like, do you just see black? <laughs> and I fucking and die. Titi goes, I don't see an aura. I don't see and I was like, aura. oh my God. <laughs> this adds up to, you know how you're always like, I don't have a soul. <laughs> Who's a soulmate? Like, I don't have a soul. <laughs> Titi's like, well, anyways, uh, so. No, but that's exactly why, dude, I cannot go on dating apps because I I think you say this to me all the time is you you swipe on dating apps as if you're a 12 out of 10. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I am so judgy on dating apps. It's so funny. I act like I look like Angelina Jolie. <laughs> like, that's First what, of all, you were stunning, so you no, should. No, but you know, like I swipe as if I deserve like Brad Pitt. You know, like I'm, I'm so I'm judgy. Fucking, I'm cackling because same. Because I'm, like, like, I'm like, I'm not that hot. Why like, am I not getting any matches? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it makes sense. <laughs> I'm fucking done. No, this is why I just don't think that I'm good on dating apps because I judge very easily. And plus. You know how hard it is to showcase your personality through those damn prompts? Like, no thanks. I'm not trying to write an essay. That's right why now. you need to do a voice prompt. Bitch, I would never. <laughs> the only reason I have a voice prompt is because I want to let them know that I speak English. <laughs> <laughs> why is that so funny? Because <laughs> you're Asian. You're so dumb. So I'm like, I'm doing a voice prompt. Wait, that's actually really funny because that's probably what I should do too. Deep tea. They're like, uh, are you fresh off the boat? <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's, honestly, that is the only reason why. I'm so done. 
<laughs> See, okay. It's like uh, uh, I mean, a hinge profile takes so much effort. And I need it somebody really to see my aura and my energy it really because does. it makes me more attractive. Speaking of that, after the show came out, <laughs> everyone came up to me, and I think you do, and they're like, "Oh my god, Deep T, I know what you're gonna say. You're so much more beautiful in person." <laughs> I get that and too. Then, ever since then, I've been like, "Great, what, what the, what the?" Fuck? I know. I was like, "I wish you said the opposite to me, knowing that millions of people are watching me on their screens, and only like a few hundred people see me like in my lifetime." Dude, so, I in real life. So I'm like, "What?" This is what I mean. I'm like, men will not like me based off of my profile. I need to be out in these streets. <laughs> no dating profiles are really tough because you know, like <laughs> your best photos. Or at least for me, my best photos don't look like me because they're the ones that <laughs> are from like great lighting, a little bit of face tune, you know, like me 20 pounds lighter from like last year. So it's hard to like balance like uh, your best photos, but what are like your yeah. really average ones? Like the ones where it's like a little bit worse than what you look like. So you kind of do you give a scale like, yeah, I'm not trying to catfish anyone out here. Actually, I uh, when I go through like your profile, like I'll, you know how sometimes I'll look through who your matches. Are? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes their first picture to their last picture is so <laughs> motherfucking. I'm like, is there five different people? Because I'm confused. <laughs> but honestly, this is why I think it's so important when you have a hinge profile or any profile, any dating profile, you gotta switch out those pictures and those prompts because you can like you know fish other people in is that the, i don't know why i said fish people in, but you know what i'm trying to say like <laughs> no i don't you can reel different types of people in through different pro it's like it's like a cover letter for your life <laughs> if i had the choice to go back to the pods or stay on dating apps i'd still choose the dating apps well of course i just feel like in this day and age yeah i just look i'm sorry but the physical aspect still matters and i'm not talking about like attractiveness, but really just talking to someone in person. And again, going back to mannerisms, going mm -hmm. back to facial expressions, seeing how they interact with like other people. Like, you know, let's say you go to a restaurant for your first date, seeing how they, you know, interact with the wait staff. Yes. Like those things I think matter. Yeah. I think that's the thing. You have to go through a lot of like iterations with people to figure out if they're your person or not, Yeah, which is like kind of tough to do because you know i'm just i'm just sick of it i don't want to i don't want to date i just want to get married is that crazy but here's why love is blind messed me up like truly messed up how i date because i'll ask the most personal questions on first dates because i'm so used to like being in the pods and asking the craziest questions yeah. like on the first day i'll be like what you know like how often do you use the bathroom that's a deep question. <laughs> it could lead to very Can deep conversation. You? Okay. I, I think I've mentioned this on the podcast before and to you, but my parents have been trying to get me in an arranged marriage since I was, mm, I don't know, as soon as I graduated <laughs> college. I threw that cap off and my parents were like, here's the match. <laughs> you know, like, are you ready to get married? <laughs> Anyways, I, I like have always been like, absolutely fucking not. I'm not getting an arranged marriage. And then this past weekend, I was with my parents and they're like, We've given you enough time. You're 33 now. <laughs> They're like, are you ready to like get married? And I'm like, obviously I am. I'm ready. And I'm kind of thinking about saying yes, like match me up with somebody because listen, the vetting that we're doing on first dates, second dates, third dates, my parents will already do that for me before I even get there. Well, look at the vetting I'm doing on Hinge before I even meet them. Exactly. I'm like, oh, sir, is that a little mole <laughs> on your neck? <laughs> Next. Exactly. Swipe left. I'm this just is, kidding. And, and that's what it is. It's like your friends and family know you the best. Mm -hmm. Why not have them vet who you go on a date with? That way you show up because I don't trust myself anymore. But I'm I don't trust my decisions. parents. I don't, I don't know. Trust I trust. I do trust them quite a bit because every boyfriend I've had, they've been like, "This is not it," and look where I am. <laughs> so look. I think I'm gonna actually. We should start a dating app where your friends and family pick the person for you. And there's then, one like that. Oh damn it! There's always one. There's one like that. But here's the thing: I don't trust my parents. Why? I feel like my mom, if she could really choose the man I'm with, it'd be a priest. A pr oh wait, they can't get married. A pastor. <laughs> That's the only option. But your dad wouldn't do you dirty like that. That's why you have your siblings. Like Sam would never let you do that. No, I think she like 
would try to pull a fast one on me and be like, yeah, that's exactly what you like. <laughs> this is why I'm saying my brother, my sister, my parents, and my fam, my friends, my best friends, you guys would know. You know what I mean? So I think like we should try that out. Bef- forget Hinge. Come on the come on the fun side with me. <laughs> oh man, you know what? I did go on a blind date that was set up by Ayana. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that was yeah, like yeah, my yeah. little matchmaking. I guess, experience. I mean, it didn't work out well. but No, it didn't work out. And that's the part that really sucked is like when you're set up with someone and you still, you know, you can't just like disappear from their lives, yeah, right? Like yeah. there's still potential, like I will see him around. <laughs> and that's the part that sucks. That does suck actually. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I'm not a big fan of like matchmaking, especially if it's with like other people. Like, you know, my parents are trying to set me up with like mm-hmm. their friend's children or like yeah. someone I will see again and mm-hmm. you know I don't know. Yeah, well in my case the my family friends or whatever they're like probably like in somewhere all over the country or world so you know there's no chance they'd be from Chicago which is great. <laughs> but I'll keep um, you guys posted pod besties if I go forward with doing that type of like matchmaking or whatever and it's successful for me I will let you know. Yeah, we'll bring him on the pod. Oh, I hope so. Please, dear God. (laughs) Please. I'm manifesting a man for myself at this moment. I was laughing last night reading everyone's funny first date stories that they submitted. It was so good. Our podcast have been on some crazy days. You guys are so funny. But before we tell your stories, can I just tell you one? Um, But before we tell your stories, can I tell you about the date that I went on last night? Please tell me. And this is why we're doing this episode. Because (laughs) I went on a date. And it was going really, really well. (laughs) Um, And I was like really hopeful. I was like, I really like him. He's very normal. Like seems really easygoing. Just I'm attracted to him. Why do I hear the butt coming? But. (laughs) But. (laughs) There's always a but. There's always. Um, he asked me, he goes, oh, like, why are you single? Like, when was, and I was like, well, multitude of reasons. But he was like, when was your last relationship and what happened? I was yeah. like, oh, like, it was a few months ago and he ended up cheating on me, oh. but like, kind of over it. And he goes, oh my gosh. And he starts getting teary eyed and he goes, oh. I was cheated on too by a family friend. Ooh. And I was like, I thought that was the end. I was like, okay, like, this is the first date. Like, that's enough information for yeah. now. We spent 30 minutes. He's telling me every single detail. What happened? He's telling me um, he found out via Snapchat. And <laughs> I was kind of like taken aback because he started tearing up during our date that I didn't know. Like I was being awkward because I was like, do I like hold him? Do I like give him a little pat hold on the back? him? Like what I was like, fuck? what? how do I like respond to this? Let him cry it out. <laughs> I kept saying like, oh. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but it was 30 minutes of him talking about That's it. That's too much for a that first date. You, you can't say, oh, I'm so sorry for 30 minutes. Like, I didn't know. I was like, what do I do? Uh, do I reach Did you over? Like, yeah, yeah, do like a little but hand no, placement. I couldn't do that to you. My hands were like under my butt. I was like, I'm going to keep these here. Um. <sighs> anyways, that happened. And Wait, can I just He say- started crying and then I, yeah, I went home and I feel really bad because like I totally get it. But I just felt like that was a lot for a first date. I agree. But also, the well, how old is this man? He's 33. Why does he? Okay, first of all, I'm 33 and I have Snapchat. But like, how is he finding out on Snapchat that she cheated? I don't think it was his latest ex. It was like someone from his 20s. Got it. That he brought up because I talked about how I got cheated on. Got when it. He was asking me like, when was my last relationship and why it ended. <sighs> and so that's how it got brought up. But it was a 30-minute story. And... <laughs> I this would happen to you. (laughs) So is there a potential for a second date or no? You know what? If the story was only 10 minutes, yes, there would have been. But like it was 20 minutes too long. And that is very mean for me to say. But I just feel like, you know, it was just one of those things where I felt so awkward that I can't look him in the eyes again. Yeah. (laughs) It's also social etiquette on a first date. Like, you don't talk about your ex. You barely mention your ex on a first date. It's about you two. And then he ended it by saying, you're such a great listener. And I was like, thank you. (laughs) Really? Because no. (laughs) I'm done with you. And I was like, thank "Thank you you so much. (laughs) I don't know why that's so funny. (laughs) You're such a talker. That's why I'm so lost. I got real quiet. I was like, (laughs) is she a good listener? (laughs) Like the mood went from like 100 to like 10. And I was like, thank you. 
You're like, please give me more tequila. <laughs> no, I was sober. Uh, I was sober. sober. And I was like, oh my was God, he sober? Do? Maybe he was drunk. No, he had an espresso martini. I was like, hey, I can't drink because I'm on antibiotics. <laughs> Why are you? Why would you go on a first date and not drink, you dummy? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the only way to get through the date. I could not I'm imagine like... being sober on a first date. So, um, oh <laughs> my gosh, wow. Well, but um, sorry to that man. I just wanted to give you guys an update. This is exactly why you're proving to me I will never go on Hinge because this is I, absurd. Like I just couldn't do it. But here's the thing. Here's the thing about going on a hinge date versus being in the pods. If I only spent 15 minutes with this man, I would have never heard this story. No, you would have heard it on day two, 45 minutes, day but three, it hour 15. But knowing how deep we get in the pods, I'd be like, this makes sense in this, you know, in this environment. environment. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, the vibes were off last night. But anyways, that's the, that's oh, a date I went on last gosh, night. But I'm can we dying. read the ones that our pod besties submitted? We yes. have to get into it. Let's read it. Okay. The first one here says, I went on a date with a man I met on OkCupid. Okay <laughs> He brought his mom without What's telling What's funny me. about OkCupid? Okay Bro, OkCupid, okay <laughs> it's like farmers only. <laughs> so neat. No. OkCupid's okay legit. Oh, really? Have you been on it? No, but so, I... So <laughs> um, you have no uh, argument here. <laughs> okay, but if our pod besties are listening and OkCupid okay has a lot of, you know, potentials, let us know. <laughs> yeah, let us know, please. I might, you know, get on there. Okay, let's, okay, let's start this. I went on a date with a man I met on OK Cupid. He brought his mom without telling me. It was weird, but the conversation was okay enough that I stayed for 1.5 hours, <laughs> an hour and a half. <laughs> At the end of the night, he asked to split the check, which isn't fair because I essentially paid for half of his mom's <laughs> chicken tenders and two drinks. <laughs> I didn't protest because I just wanted to get out of there. And I ended up telling him the next day that I didn't feel enough of a romantic spark to see him again. Well, he gave me his what? Well, he gave his mom my number and she ended up texting me to ask what was wrong with her son and why I wouldn't go on a second date with him. It pissed me off because I texted back, hi, please don't text me, but this whole situation is why I would not go on a second date with him. And she proceeded to call me 10 more times and left a voicemail to tell me I was ugly? Who is this helicopter I'm gonna pee. mom? I'm gonna pee my don't ass. pee, those are new couches we might have to return. Wait, what the hell? What is the funniest is this a story joke? <laughs> this is a helicopter oh my gosh. mother. You know what? I would do the same thing. Like you, you would if, be the mom if you had a kid. No, no, I meant like <laughs> probably. But um, even if it was weird, I'm I'm not good at like ending a conversation early, and I probably would have been there for like five hours. Okay, actually. first of all, like the mom should have paid. It's always the oldest pays. I know. I'd be pissed too if I had to split half of her chicken tenders and two drinks. I'd be like, this isn't equitable right now. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I would run. I'd the, be like, I need to use the bathroom and never come back. The funniest part is the fact that he gave his mom her number. No. And she left a voicemail saying she was ugly. No, there's some weird shit going on between this mother-son <laughs> duo. Like, let's face it. There's something weird happening here. Like, Oh, I love this story, though. Wow. Why? Do we? Do we? I really feel bad for this pod bestie. Thank God you ran. Yeah, this... Um, You know what? I really believe in the saying of, like, if you marry a man, you also marry his family. A hundred percent. And I just feel like Imagine having at least, her for a mother-in-law. Yeah, I was like, at least you kind of like knew right away it wasn't going to work out. Because I feel like some people date for a long time and they meet the family and they're like, oh. In what world? It, all this is proving to me is that OkCupid okay has weird ass men. No, I'm telling you, OkCupid okay is legit. Not from this story. <laughs> Please. Okay, let me read this next one. I was talking to this guy over text for a while. Our parents were friends and introduced us, and we were finally hanging out in person for the first time. I'll just start off by saying he was way out of my league, so cute, smart, and a college baseball player. It was just him and I in his apartment, which was extremely small and old. I immediately took note that the bathroom was right behind the wall that the couch was on, and everything that happened in the bathroom could be heard in the whole apartment. Ooh. <laughs> what an observation. My, my worst nightmare. <laughs> The apartment was so old, there wasn't even a fan in the bathroom to drown out the noise. So we chat for a while, then decide to watch a movie. 
We turn on Bird Box and he puts his arm around me and I lay on his shoulder. We're barely into the movie when I start to feel the dreaded tummy grumbles coming on. I know that know that real well. Natalie knows that so well. Then it dawned on me. My dumbass ate a rice bowl with beans and corn in it for lunch. My body temperature <laughs> rises 10 degrees <laughs> and my heart rate spikes and I had to make the most important decision of my life. Do I brave it and try to get through the movie or do I enter the bathroom and have him hear the graphic event that was surely about to unfold? Awkward. As I debated my plan of action, I realized the gas was proceeding solid and I couldn't hold it in. What comes next was the most foul, rank, utterly disgusting fart that I have ever smelled. Oh. There was no denying that it was me given that we were alone. <laughs> I unfortunately couldn't blame it on the rotting raccoon in this man's apartment. On the third floor, <laughs> what? There's a lot. What of- the f <laughs> is happening? There's a lot of new details in this. Story I know. I was like, like, let's huh? skip over these graphic details. <laughs> I feel him get fidgety and can tell he's trying so hard not to either throw up or faint. And instead of channeling my inner Natalie and just owning it, <laughs> I aggressively say what to which he has no response. Thankfully, the tummy grumble settled, but we proceeded to sit on his couch and finish the movie in silence. He was so sweet when the night was over, and I was leaving and pretend. He was so sweet when the night was over and I was leaving and pretended it never happened. He even dared to give me a hug. We never spoke again. And to this day, I am kept awake at night wondering what he told his family (laughs) as to why we didn't work out. And the story is why I need therapy. I felt like I just read a actual (laughs) telenova. Honestly, this story makes me want to get therapy, too. <laughs> you are in therapy. <laughs> but, like, I needed an additional session. You need a therapy session, or you need a therapist just to deal with your Here's the bowels. thing. If you were channeling your inner Natalie, and um, you think that I would own it, I would not own it. Okay? Bro. Bro. You would... You're talking Remember to the woman... Remember Shit and Run? I know. You were talking to the woman <laughs> who clogged some man's toilet... And I ran out of his house and never saw him again. <laughs> like, you know I, I would not own it. This is so funny because when it comes to going to the bathroom and things like that, like, I'm pretty sure I was in a relationship for obviously like six plus years, three plus years and some. W- even one year into that relationship, that man had no idea I even farted or went to n- number two. Absolutely not. Wow. Yeah. I'm you know, so good at it. For me, like at that six month mark, actually, I do it probably earlier at the two month mark. <laughs> I talk about it. Yeah. I like have to start. Well, yeah, you have some issues. It. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like, you know, I, I need to talk about it. Do you remember when New York boy hated when I talked about it? Yes. That was red flag. Red I know. Flag, that, that should have been a sign of incompatibility. <laughs> Look, I mean, um, this is a crazy ass story, but I really want to know about the uh, rotting raccoon. Yeah. What the hell is a rotting raccoon? Also, also, come on. Like, that man wasn't. I wonder why they didn't go on a second date. Hmm, maybe because she had the smelliest fart. I feel like if a man farted and didn't make like a little joke of it or be like, oh, sorry, like I farted and just was like denying that it was him, yeah. just said nothing, I'd be like, like let's not <laughs> take it so me. let's not take it so seriously. Yeah. Right? If you fart, you own it, girl. Yeah. Just own it and be like, sorry, that one smelled. <laughs> <laughs> Ate a bigger lunch. <laughs> Sorry, I had some beans and corn. My bad. <laughs> like, just oh, that it. was a funny one, though. <laughs> okay, another one from our pod bestie. I am pretty laid back when it comes to first dates, but this one was bad. Met a guy on Tinder. We we talked for a while before we met in person. And no red flags. We finally met at a pub. He made me buy my own drinks, and then he ordered nachos for himself. <laughs> In an afterthought fashion, he asked if I wanted some. As he's licking his fingers and digging back in, (laughs) he then got into some weird pissing match with another pub patron about the game going on, all while nacho cheese and chili is still around his lips. (laughs) Then after, he wanted me to go to the phone store with him to get a phone upgrade and later go meet his family. What? The hell did I just read? (laughs) Can I tell you something? (laughs) Is this you? (laughs) I want to know if she went to the phone store with him and then also met his family. If she did not, good for you for setting boundaries. But I know if this was me, I'd feel so awkward that I would actually go with him. Uh, there's no chance in hell. Like, I'm really bad on this. I want to be extra nice on dates. And if they like ask me something or do something afterward, like go to the phone store, I will be like, sure. Honestly, same. You're right. I would be, I would be doing the exact same thing because that's me too is like on first dates. 
most of my first dates, not to toot my own horn, but they like just lead into relationships. Oh, wow. No, that's why I haven't been on that many first dates because the first one I went on ended up being a three year relationship <laughs> and then like the fourth or fifth. First and date. then Shake literally led to engagement. I know. And, and, and Kyle. The, I mean, Kyle never took me on a date. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> but really, did he? I don't yeah, think I was so. going to say. I was going to say. Mm, I don't know. I took him on a lot of dates. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, um, that's weird. I would like literally make my friend call me and be like, I'm so sorry. I don't want to like, leave. Absolutely it's the nacho not. things. Like that's people who lick their fingers in public. Dude, because sometimes I will do it in private. I'm not gonna lie. Wait. Like, eat some hot Cheetos. I'm licking those fingers. Yeah, do anything you want in private. Yeah, but like, if you if you're licking your fingers in public and then digging your nasty ass fingers back in, wait. <laughs> I feel like that's a red flag. Can I tell you? I had this conversation with my girlfriends the other night because we were watching the final four final. We were watching the final game on Monday, right? And we ordered wings and like all these different things. And I was talking about how there is no way in hell that if I'm on a first date, I am buying any type of food that it's hard to eat. For example, a wing. Are you kidding me? There's no, no chance in hell. I no food even, on a first date. I wouldn't even order like like a Caesar salad that has really big lettuce because, you know, like white Caesar dressing gets all over your face. Like, no, no way in hell. <laughs> no, one time I was on a date and I was eating a salad. And this was like not a first date. I think it was like a third date. And the lettuce was so big that I actually had to take my finger. Because like I feel like when you eat, if you're self-conscious on a date and you're eating, for some reason I feel like your mouth doesn't like open as well. Yes. You're like, oh, you're, not try you're trying to be like cute. You're trying to look like, okay, because I'm an ugly ass eater. No, I can be too. Like, you know, like I didn't, my, my face just like does this like weird contouring yes. as I'm eating. Like it's just like. No, that's so me. um I remember one time like a lettuce was too wide and I literally had to take my finger and shove it. <laughs> you shoved it in and not out? Into my mouth. You're ridiculous. No, dude, that happens. Like I was like, ah. Dude, imagine like eating a burger and then uh, you take a bite, but the lettuce gets stuck. So you pull it out and the whole <laughs> lettuce comes out with you. You're like, shit. And also I have like groovy ass teeth. So there's constantly things getting like stuck, stuck in, in my teeth. teeth. No, this is exactly why I order food very strategically on a first date. Like if I'm trying to get wings, they better be boneless. I can cut them. It's easy to bite size. I'm no, I need something crazy. that I have to cut with a knife. Yes, like even pasta. You know where you slip? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like and slurping. the red sauce is like it's just like. Or you're wearing white and it goes. Oh, um, mm -mm, nope, nope, nope. No, really, having a first dinner with someone you like it, re it requires a lot of like thinking and strategizing for 100%. sure. Like, I yes, I definitely do want that pasta on the menu, but I'll probably go for soup. You know, yeah, something yeah. easy to slurp. Yeah, do like a ravioli, not a yeah, spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, important. <laughs> Okay, last story. Um, my first date was with my now husband, and he took me to a funeral. I have no idea how we made it past that first date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, you know, that's a really cheap date. I bet he didn't really pay much. Yeah, I but I wonder if he like just took some buddy to like a it was like a family funeral like imagine going to a funeral and first of all the fact that she married him is wild to me like was it a surprise was he like hey gotta stop by somewhere and it was a funeral sounds like a hallmark movie to be honest yeah like she must have known she's going to a funeral because you have to wear you typically wear black right mm -hmm. yes hmm, interesting imagine well, showing up to a date didn't know it was a funeral but you're like in <laughs> pink or like yellow or something and everyone's wearing black well do you have like a first outfit you always wear a first date outfit because i do mm -hmm. yeah for every season wait this is so funny i heard this on very cavallari kristen cavallari's podcast and she goes you guys every time i go on a first date i always go to the same restaurant and i wear the exact same dress <laughs> and she's like the staff probably is like this bitch is just constantly wearing the same thing and always coming here with new guys and i died i was like that's so funny but yes i definitely okay. have a outfit that i love how i look in that i will always wear on first dates it's been a while but yes okay i'm like Kristen. <laughs> yes, I, I know you are i've been on six first dates the last month Mm -hmm. and we <gasps> and i've gone to the same place oh my time. god i have to tell you the story night that you said that okay 
I went to this place and I had two dates in a row. So I went there night number one. I was with a date and we were really hitting it off. So, you know, a little tipsy deeps was definitely making out with this man at the booth. And it's like a dark setting. So it's not like everyone was watching us. Right. The bartender was super cool, whatever. I come back the next day and this same bartender, she called me out on my second date and was like, aren't you the girl who was here with um, uh, that other dude yesterday? Like, weren't you just like kissing him? And I was like, did she literally called me out to this man? And I've never gone back to that restaurant <laughs> since. And I will murder any of my friends who do. <laughs> Isn't that wild, though? That is she broke girl code. She hates me. I was like, why do you hate me? And this was before the show. So she had no idea who I was. Yeah. But so the place that I've gone six times, the hostess always remembers me. It's of the course. same hostess. She also recognizes me from the show. <laughs> and I'm that sucks for you. And now thinking back on it, I am always wearing the same outfit. <laughs> Hey, you gotta show um, up with confidence. Sometimes I'll like change my hair a little bit, but <laughs> I wonder what she thinks. But I definitely do have a spot. Like yeah. if if the guy asks like any recommendations, I'm like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> you know, like the place I go. Yes. And I love it because it's walking distance from my house. No, it's perfect. I know I love that place too. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. Oh, of course. Yeah. I love that place. But we it's... went there for my birthday. <laughs> For after, Watch people after our, dinner drinks. Our pod besties are sleuths. They will go find this place. Okay, but you know what? It's the benefit of the guy because the drinks are pretty reasonable. It's quiet. Or it's not like, quiet. It's like a dark setting. They yeah. have live music sometimes. There's it's, always it's tables vibe. available. So it's yeah. like very little planning. So look, I feel like I'm doing them a favor. But now that I'm in the dating scene, I definitely am now that like I have the place, <laughs> the outfit, the questions I'm going to ask. <laughs> They're really every conversation is literally the same i'm done <laughs> this is you just spelling that out for me is the reason why i do not want to date because of that routine because <laughs> i'm i just can't do it it's just, i'm like it's just another day in the life <laughs> when i go on one i'm like whoa well i feel like i've done this 20 times already <laughs> yeah you're like hmm, when is it gonna be the <sighs> one but well anyways these were really fun stories to read they were we love these <laughs> we really do there's tons more too and we wish we could read them all and maybe we will in the future yeah maybe the next episode but yeah. you guys know where to find us reach out to us on our instagram page at out of the pods and make sure you leave a review and subscribe see you next wednesday bye